I remember a stormy Michigan football game in November. In spite of a state-of-the-art drainage system designed for an athletic field, players were sloshing around in the wet snow, cold rain, and mud. Add to that all the water draining from the parking lot, stadium seats, and around the vendors' food and drink carts, and the university's stormwater drainage system was working just as hard as those football players. In this program, we will examine the university's stormwater management system, how it is designed, how it works, and what is being done to continuously improve its effectiveness. We'll also discuss two other proactive environmental management activities undertaken by the university. We'll look at waste management practices and campus expansion and planning. In the end, we will see how the university's overall environmental management strategy which is designed to anticipate and prevent environmental pollution before it creates cleanup problems, is making Michigan the leaders and the best. Rain is a natural part of our planet's water cycle. It is critical to sustaining life. Yet, in the process of running into streams, rivers, lakes, and ultimately oceans, stormwater can become polluted as it comes in contact with certain human activities. For example, Water running off a paved parking lot may carry enough grease, antifreeze, and oil to contaminate thousands of gallons of drinking water. Precipitation can flow quickly over hard, less permeable surfaces and can pick up trash, debris, leaves, and bacteria from pet waste while making its way to the storm water system. The water that runs over the surface is known as runoff and in many communities it discharges directly into local streams, rivers, or lakes without first being cleaned. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, urban runoff is a major source of pollution for lakes and rivers. Recognizing the threat to our drinking water supplies and to natural aquatic environments, the U.S. Congress enacted the Clean Water Act in 1972. The Act established national programs for the prevention, reduction, and elimination of pollution in navigable waters and groundwaters. It also set water quality standards and required permits for the discharge and treatment of wastewater from industries and municipalities. The Clean Water Act requires anyone discharging point sources into bodies of water to have a permit that establishes pollution limits and specifies monitoring and reporting requirements. Point sources are specific, easily identified sources of pollution, such as an industrial wastewater or municipal sewer discharge. The Clean Water Act has been a tremendous success, dramatically improving the quality of our water by cleaning up point source pollution. However, with the reduction of point source pollution, it became evident that pollution coming from different sources over a wide, non-specific area, also known as non-point sources, was a major cause of water pollution. To address this problem of non-point source urban runoff, the Federal Water Quality Act of 1987 required municipalities with populations over 100,000 to obtain permits for their stormwater discharges. In December 1995, the University of Michigan voluntarily entered the permit program and was issued a municipal stormwater permit by the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. In general, the stormwater systems collect rainwater and melted snow and release it directly into the Huron River with minimal treatment. Since stormwater is typically not clean before entering the river, trash and other contaminants that make it past the storm grates and retention basins will end up in the river. The University of Michigan maintains its own separate stormwater and sanitary sewer systems, which have 48 openings that empty into the City of Ann Arbor storm system, Allen Drain, Traver Creek, Miller's Creek, and the Huron River. The stormwater system is typically very open to the public. It's on the surface streets. It's anything that's poured out on the grass or on the parking areas. When it rains, it's going to flow to the stormwater system. So in order for us to control what's entering the system, it becomes more a matter of educating anybody who might be in the area 
on what they shouldn't be doing that could impact on the system. As an example, at the stadium, what we try to do is educate every vendor that it's not proper to take their water from their coke machines and things and just let it drain to the ground because that's flowing to the stormwater system. When you're living on campus, say in family housing, you want to be careful that you're not doing something out in your yard that might be impacting on the stormwater. You want to be careful you're not washing your car out in a parking lot and the oil and grease is running right straight to a storm drain. These are the types of things that we're trying to educate people on so that everybody can take responsibility for managing the stormwater system. The university is taking proactive steps to reduce and eliminate pollution in the first place. In other words, by anticipating the stormwater pollution sources that originate from daily operations and maintenance of a major university, staff are designing and conducting these activities in such a way as to prevent stormwater pollution at the source. Let's take a look at some specific examples. In the design and implementation of operation and maintenance activities around campus, stormwater protection means controlling bank erosion, water quality, and flooding. Eroded soil is a leading water pollutant by volume in the Middle Huron River. In addition, uncontrolled sediment can clog stormwater management systems, leading to higher maintenance costs and flooding. The University of Michigan controls stormwater pollution on its construction sites by controlling sedimentation and erosion. Each site is reviewed prior to construction and approval of the drawings. We utilize straw bales, fabric filter fences, and fabric over storm inlets. The University of Michigan controls are more stringent than the state and federal law. Another example of stormwater protection is the university's state-of-the-art snow removal system. It protects people from snow and ice accidents on campus and at the same time protects the stormwater from runoff of de-icing chemicals and materials. It's important that we consider runoff issues because in an average year we fill these three bays approximately five and a half times which is around 2600 tons uh, of salt and almost a thousand tons of sand per year. And unfortunately in the spring after the rains have, have washed the evidence away these materials have not disappeared they've just moved into inappropriate places. We have the advantages now of liquid new generation liquid de-icing products that enable us to, to do very precise application techniques, to apply significantly less products on the paving surface. The, uh, they're certainly less corrosive, they're much more environmentally friendly, and in tandem with our other products will help us to reduce the overall amount of materials that we use. In the end, we'll be able to significantly reduce the amounts of salts and sands that we have to use on the paving surfaces from ever entering our stormwater systems and ultimately the Huron River. These are only a few examples of how stormwater management at the University of Michigan has evolved from a response to legal and regulatory requirements. Today, university staff are thinking beyond compliance with the rules. We are proactively designing and conducting our daily activities to prevent pollution in the first place. This strategy is demonstrated time and time again throughout the university's environmental management programs. Let's explore two examples of this management strategy in action, waste management and the campus expansion and planning process.